Hi folks, this is the Gary Hickson Show. Hi, I'm Gary Hickson. I'm the one responsible for The Empire Strikes Back and all the shows you've been seeing lately. I also do the City Council. We're here filming, doing the first stuff that I've ever done. We're going to do like an interview for a half hour, then we're going to do another interview. Anyway, this is my apartment. This is what it looks like. Um, can you pan a little bit this way? Okay, this is the couch. It's hard to get the couch in here. This is my couch. And this is me going back to my mark. Okay, so I supposed to stand on my mark. But anyway, um, we're going to try to do this all in one take. I was on the Piggy Penny show in 2003, and uh, I did pretty good at that. And uh, I'm just going to try not to bore people, because a lot of these shows uh, um, sometimes can be boring. It's the creative people usually aren't there, but you got him right here. So I'm good behind the camera. But anyway, um, this is going to be airing. I live in Moore Bay, California, and we're going to be doing the Gary Tyler Moore Show and the Biotronic Woman. And I am not gay. I love gay people. I think they're wonderful. But I have a girlfriend, but I am playing a girl, kind of like Dustin Hoffman did in Tootsie. I thought that was the greatest movie in the world. He was just so cool. That was, that was, that was really a, a good movie. Um, and I thought that uh, the last three Star Wars films were good. I had those all edited. I also do a thing called Mirror Vision. I think the best performances are still on Broadway. I think that uh, the, it's always the same person, the Nashua. Who was the best? Who was your favorite? You'd think it would have been uh, Carol Channing, Stalker Channing, and Hello Dolly, or you know uh, Carol Burnett or something. It was Lorette Taylor, supposedly, in, uh, uh, in The Glass Menagerie and Outward Bound. And I thought, well, the Gary Tyler Moore show sounds like The Glass Menagerie. It has a G and an M. And the Bionic Woman, the Biotronic Woman, sounds like Outward Bound. So I thought, isn't that weird how that happened? But <clears throat> they never, they did screen test for her. But she was a lot like Ethel Barrymore. But they never used her. But Broadway, that's what I wanted, but I stayed here. But um, some of these tapes are going to be going to some public access channels in New York, which will be basically like Broadway. You see my hair in the back. I tie it in the back. And that was hard to conquer over the years. I'm 46 years old. I live in Morro Bay. I don't have a girlfriend. I ain't looking for one either. No, just kidding. That's a line from uh, an officer and a gentleman. She's like, what do you do? He's like, you got a girlfriend? He's like, no. I'm not looking for one either. Richard Gere. Anyway, um, I suppose Dustin Hoffman is down in a playhouse right now, and he's uh, he's doing a, he's doing theater down there. I think he's still down there. But we wish he would come up here and help us. And uh, we're trying to get <clears throat> um, the film shot more professionally, so we can get people like Drew Barrymore to do it for free. Because a lot of this money is going to be going to charities around here for crippled kids and stuff. And uh, I live next to the copy shop. I live. This, this apartment is 761 Butte Avenue, apartment 5, Morro Bay, and I live right next, I live right behind the Morro Bay Coffee Company. And if you climb up Black Hill, you can see the coffee shop from, uh, from the mountain, and it's pretty cool looking. But um, I'm just doing an hour interview, I'm trying to answer questions. Gary, tell us about when you started making shows for public access. Um, I started making shows for public access in late 2008, um, the la that last month. Um, so, something had happened with the, the members. There was somebody was taking over like 70 programs or something. I'm not going to name names, but supposedly there was discrimination going on. So all of a sudden there was Crystal McGrew um, asking, tell, asking people to go on there. So I tried it in 2004, and of course, like a lot of people back then, um, they wouldn't let you on the air. So we got on the air. I finally got on the air. They straightened out the station and. Uh, We've been running it ever since. But you really enjoy shows from the 50s and 60s. What are your favorite yeah, don't TV you? shows oh, that have inspired you? Favorite TV shows from you? the 50s and 60s. Oh, my dad was like there was a lot of them. I think one of them was called uh, Well, The Lone Ranger was a good show. That was 50s. Um, was Howdy Doody, whatever. Cheech and Chong always makes fun of him. We might be doing some stuff like that. But it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be called Lisa Cheech and Wendy Pong, <laughs> and we play these two hippie jigs. But it's gonna be way over the top. Total tribute to Cheech Marin, and of course Tommy Chong. Um, a lot of people don't know that the girl in Commando, that's actually Chami Chong's daughter, Ray, Ray, Ray Dong Chong. And I was there when they did Commando. I was working up at Hearst Castle when they blew up the barracks. I was across, you know, doing the trash. But I didn't get to meet Arnold Schwarzenegger, but some of my friends were trying to be extras in that movie. Anyway, here's some stuff that I, uh, that I, can, I can read. It is original material. It isn't, you know, reading Winnie the Pooh, which I almost read. We probably shouldn't even say that. I'm going to get letters. Anyway. This, I, these four stories I sent to Reader's Digest um, on July 12, 2001. You know, a few months before the towers went down. I must have known something was up because I was trying to help people, warn them. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, um, here's four of them that I sent in for like laughter is the best medicine or life in these United States, all in a day's work and humor and uniform. They didn't print them, so here's the one from uh, 
Laughter is the best medicine. It's one day in high school, on the first day, I couldn't find my homeroom class. I found it, went inside. They were calling rolls, so I sat down. I thought, this isn't it. And went back out again. Having nowhere else to go, I went back in again. As soon as I sat down, the teacher called my name, and I said, here, and everybody laughed. What a buffoon, huh? Here's one for life in these United States. One day homeless, this is a true story by the way. One day homeless, waiting for the bus at the Exponade in Oxnard, California, my dad was coming to save me a bus ride home. So whatever homeless place I was at. I found five dollars in the parking lot, looked around, didn't see anyone, so I went inside to get changed for a five for the bus. Uh, I said, can I get changed for a five? Yes, she said, and gave me change for a ten. Okay, my dad showed up rescuing me and I told him the story then added, what, I get on the bus and she gives me change for a 20? My dad just laughed. So, they they're really kind of don't prank anybody, but all in a day's work. This is another, another true story. They're, these are all true stories. Working at Straw Hat Pizza one time, a lady ordered a pizza and a Coke. Well, the pizza was done. I grabbed it and took off. All, as I was all the way across town, I realized I forgot the Coke. Spotting a nearby McDonald's, I rushed in and bought a Coke, grabbed a McDonald's game card, put it in my pocket and brought her the Coke. I said, you don't know McDonald's, do you? She said, I guess not, nervously. She laughed and nervously took the Coke. When I, bit back, when I went back to Straw Hat, the manager pulled the game card out of my pocket. What's this? I told him the story and got permanently nicknamed Ronald McDonald, the term they still tease me about. That's a true story. Here's another one. Humor and uniform. One day in the Marines boot camp, my cousin David was in a line of soldiers and the drill sergeant had these big swab sticks with pads on the end. He asked every soldier, what do you do with this stick? He said, I'm going to have two of you face off and one is going to run at the other. David, you and John go at it. They were about 20 feet across from each other when the sergeant each gave them a stick. Then the sergeant said, okay, John, run at David with the stick. Um, he stuck his stick out, started running at full speed. David didn't know what to do, then dropped. Sticking his stick into the ground, the swab into the guy's stomach. He went flying through the air and hit the ground. The sergeant screamed, I love you, man. I love you. That's what you're supposed to do. I love you. So that's another one. Um, we want to give credit to Charter right now. We're supposed to give Charter because we they have we have used the equipment there over the years and we're giving credit to Charter in case we use the studios and they're letting us you know, drop our stuff off for cable cast. There's a station in Santa Maria, but anyway, um, it's a very nice day. It's uh, 2.25, Tuesday the 3rd. Yeah, uh, and uh, um, anyway, I've been doing this for about oh, 20 years or so. I'm 46, since I was about 26, I'd say. But um, this is a very boring interview. So just realize, we've got shows coming. They're gonna work. It's gonna be, the, the, we don't even know if we can call it the Gary Tyler Moore Show. We might have to call it the Gary Robert Hickson Jr. Show, the Gary Hickson <laughs> Show or something. So right now, um, what I'm doing is dropping the, I drop the vocals on the Gary Tyler Moore Show, um, where you just hear the strings. So I want it to where you can hear that full orchestra going, because that, that's a lot better than what she was doing, because I like I like it with that guy's voice going, who can turn the world on? It ruins the orchestra. So we're going to do it with full orchestra. We may even have to redo it all. But, and it's going to be a tribute to Mary Tyler Moore and the bio, by Lindsey Wagner and Mary Tyler Moore. You know, but um, Gary Tyler Moore is a character I play. It's not really me. You know? It is, but I don't think anybody could really pretend. And I don't think anybody's that happy. What know? kind of costuming do you like? I wish I used to be that happy when I was a kid. Um, the costumes are incredible. Like, if you see Gary Hickson walking around town, I always say, you never know who I am. I'm always a different character. We're doing about 200 shows right now. And uh, we're only kind of film like I think five shows plus a revolving door, which would be six. So it's well, the Gary. Tell us about the revolving door. The revolving door means we're doing new shows. We're going to do one, hopefully called Really Lost in Space. You know, Really Lost in Space. <laughs> Another one, the Really Pink Power Ranger. I have to wear pink in that one. Um, what's the other one? Um, oh, Land of the Really Lost. <laughs> Land of the Really Lost Dresses. Then. Um, Sigmund and the Sea Monsters is going to be, I think, Lisa. I'm supposed to play a girl, Lisa. Lisa and the Sigmund. L Lisa and Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, or something like that. Because I like that show. We're doing one like Land of the Lost. But it is supposed to be called Land of the Really Lost. But they may come at us.
but the, the shows are so different than what they've ever done before. So they see me at city council. I do city council all the time. I'm trying not to look at the camera. Some guy just went by on a bicycle. But it's Grand Central Station when you live by those three gas stations in San Luis Obispo. It's you know, it's kind of bizarre. Do you have other cast members, or do you like to work by yourself? Uh, there's no only. Crystal Mulgrew said, "Well, I can. We can only have like five because I have to give to Kristen, who runs the station." runs the tape things, I have to give her uh, model release agreements for five different other people. And that's about all, that's about all you can get. Mm. I mean, that's all you should really do. And then we're doing like 12 or 14, 12 to 14 people that we get verbal permission from. And then the other stuff's crowd scans. And I think as long as we film, I think, I don't know what the rule is, like five or 10 seconds on a crowd scan, but if you film more than that, it's against the law. So we're trying to, I always go by the rules anyhow. The best way. Yeah, you know, the Eddie Van Halen, the Eddie Van Halen school of manners. You know, <laughs> I could never figure out how my friends got away with murder, but I, I was only get caught doing nothing. You know. I'm way worse than he is. But we're gonna be doing some guitar stuff for Ozzy Osbourne, and uh, but like, like I said before, I'm Gary Hickson. I'm an actor. Um, I'm an out of work actor, and I'm just getting back on the public access. And so I still have to get a camera. I don't have a camera. They got they got these little you know they got Leslie. They got these little pink Sony cams. And they're like a hundred bucks, but the problem is when you get those cheap cameras, you have to go and unlock it on the internet or on a computer, and I can't find a place to do that. <laughs> do you usually shoot on location? What locations have you been on? I usually destroy the cameras first out. No. <laughs> I shoot on location. Um, we're going to be doing outdoor shots mostly because that's the one thing. And the last thing you want to see is stuff like I'm doing right now, where I'm in the living room and. I'm doing an interview on my life, get a life type stuff. Uh, but we're going to do both, actually. But mostly it'll be outside because that's what they mess up on. Nobody wants to come home at 5 o'clock at the end of the day and see a sitcom. They want to see outdoor stuff and none of it's done. Because Hollywood has all the technical abilities, but none of the creative magic. You know, like only one out of every million person could probably hear their own voice to be an actor or a guitar player, or a proper musician, because you have to hear your own voice and you have to play by ear. And, and you have to have perfect pitch, perfect pitch. No, you don't. No, you don't. You, you don't have to have it. But I, I have good pitch. You know, it's good enough. Do you play an instrument? Yeah, the drums mostly. Like I'm so deaf, I can't even hear my phone ring. That's how Keith Moon. Keith Moon was so deaf he couldn't even hear his phone ring. So yeah, my ears are pretty gone. I think they're hooking me up for some kind of hearing device. Are you ready to go outside and do let's some go on outside. location let's stuff? Let's get it. Like let's walk around the grounds a little bit. I'm gonna, show, I'm gonna show everybody some of the grounds. Here's my bike. Get a shot of my bike. This is the bike that I have. Yeah. Okay, now back up to me. And here I am. We're walking around. I guess I'll just go to the car. Is, it, is the light levels okay for that? Yep. That's a messy stain. You can get the stain and show them how I messed it all up. Uh -oh, See, that's from spray painting shoes for the shows. All the different oh. <laughs> spray paint I use for different colored tennis shoes. Which I'm trying to get my, this is my car. This is going to be the new Knight Rider car. I can't say it's going to be called Knight Rider because it'll be probably called Lisa Knight Rider or something. But or Gary Knight Rider. This is a 1985 Mazda RX-7. Uh, it's a five-speed. It's one of the most powerful cars they made in '85. They sort of did everything to it. And yeah, I've gotten speeding tickets, but not anymore. It was $221 times two speeding tickets from one summer to the, to the last summer, and that was it for me. I learned my lesson. So I, you know, I drive 65 miles an hour, and that's what you should drive, and 25 around schools. And I don't know, here's the back of the car. Kind of try to get shots of me, too. To film, get shots of um, me also, Leslie. Mm -hmm. That's the car, and this is me by the car. Okay and show the coffee shop. There's a coffee shop she's gonna pan to right now. Okay, here we go. We're going over to the coffee shop. Yay! They're gonna let us in. Uh-oh, there's somebody. Go ahead and get them on there. But that, you know, that's cool. We're walking over to the coffee shop. There's a really nice apartment. It's the only apartment that gets a breeze coming up from, the, from over there. Okay. Go in and bug them, huh? Let's do it. We'll go in there and put them on camera. Thanks, <laughs> Leslie. What about the rules? It's great. We have.
have permission. This is the Morro Bay Coffee Company. It's also the Chablis Cruise, Chablis Cruises, and I live right next door to it. This is the coffee shop. And there's some of the pastries. Um, go ahead and pan to the pastries. Oh, but keep it there for a second. Those are some of the pastries. You got chocolate chip cookies. You got snickerdoodle cookies, cinnamon rolls for three dollars, uh, magic bars, and the best coffee in Morro Bay, without a doubt. And go ahead and get the board up there. That kind of like something that looks like from Good Luck with Charlie. That looks really cool. Another board up there. Lattes, cappuccino, smoothies. Um, and here's the uh, egg sandwiches. Yeah. This is where I made the coffee drink right here. At the end of the day. <laughs> It goes to the back door. This bench works in the back. Here's the inside. They just painted it in here. They just painted the walls. There's the bulletin board. Okay, now I'm out in front of the coffee shop. Now the breeze is really starting to pick up. But I figured there's spirits going up through the up through the road from Japan, you know, like dead people going all the way across the ocean just to go through my apartment and the front of this building, of course. I don't know. Uh, I'm in front of the shop and we're still doing an interview. We have permission to film. Te Leslie's teaching me about asking for permission. I never thought about that. I just film this stuff. Somebody's starting to walk by. Um, I've been in music a lot longer than I have been anywhere else. You know. People probably ask, how long are you going to be doing this? Oh, indefinitely, as long as we're still standing, as long as I'm still alive. Um, you know. What are some projects that you would like to do that you haven't done yet? Musical projects like Rush type stuff, Led Zeppelin. I think Rush was a better band. If you ask Jimmy Page, his favorite band, Rush. Rush without a doubt. Yeah, a musical um, projects. I want to take it on the road. Um, I'm going to get my own camera and start filming. I got to learn how to do these things. So then all I'd say is, Leslie, this is how you do this, and you could film it yourself. Um, and I just want to keep getting better at it, but it's expensive for the equipment, you know. You got to get your own camera though. If you're in public access, you have to get your own camera and have your own studio. Once you get that, if you're good at it, you go, you know. If you're not, if you're not comfortable with it, go somewhere else because you meet the best people in the world in Hollywood and also the weirdest, you know. Some, people, some of them are psychos. I've had plenty of people pulling knives on me that said they were actors, you know, or musicians. What are some of your favorite actors? Uh, Dustin Hoffman I like. Good, uh, Donald Sutherland, um, Jack Nicholson, yeah, like Jack Nicholson ordering a sandwich. I want a tuna fish sandwich, French fries, and mayonnaise. You know, just what an ass. Um, anyway, we're in Morro Bay, and uh, we'll be doing some filming from inside stores if they let us in. You could show you, at, show me shopping at Albertsons or Rite Aid. You know, really incredible things like that. Um, now I've been in this about here for about eight years on this last stint. I used to live in Ventura, California. That's when J.C. Duger disappeared, when um, I was living in Ventura. So they were really thought she was long gone. She got $20 million from the state of California. I think that's great. Yeah, I wouldn't want to have to go to prison. But that's glad that he's in prison, though. He should. That is good that they got caught. But yeah, the house does look kind of weird. It's kind of a light blue trim. Um, it's just an apartment. There's a waterfall right out there. You want to get that on there? Okay, I'm just gonna kind of walk away. So if the camera is on nothing, you'll still hear something. Anyway, I'm just gonna go about my business a little bit. Yeah, just keep it on that same is shot. TV? Do you? Do you I, don't know, I asked him if he wanted to film for the coffee shop. He was like, oh no, I don't know, you know, because he he knows he's going on the air. It's scary, you know. But no, I'm perfectly comfortable in front of a camera, you know. I'm, I'm from Ventura, California, you know, I was born to drive, you know. There goes a cab, there goes a taxi going by. Is that okay, Leslie, if I just walk around a little bit? I mean, just leave it on my shot. Yeah. We've explained it to the audience members. I'll also talk to the camera, okay? <laughs> I know the camera's there. Um, uh, what the hell? Does that start come in like that? Can you see that? I'll, I'll zoom in on it. This is Mirror TV. Mirror Vision. Is it working? Oh, I can see it, yeah. Okay, this is Mirror Vision right here. That's, that's the tunnel right there. That's the Mirror Vision. That's the mirrors on the TVs. The most any human beings ever done is two mirrors, left, right. I've done them all. With a tunnel, 
with uh, visor glasses, one-eyed visor glasses, ones for your visor. It can be done digitally. You can do it digitally in a TV by pulling the screens away. And since it's backward and it's mirror and it's uh, <coughs> angled, it, it works really well because it makes it flow. Like if you did it all going the same way, it wouldn't work as well. But there's a problem. There's a glitch in it, and it has to be done digitally and mixed with it. But anyway, to know any more, you have to sign a confidential disclosure agreement <laughs> that, really, that I drew up with my attorney, and then I can explain more of Mirror Vision to you. Coming in the future. Mm -hmm. Let's get to that. Drawings. Anyway. Got some drawings to show us? No, but here's a good picture of Diana. That's a pretty good picture of her, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Very nice. Is that coming in okay? Or should I stop back? No, it's fine. Okay. She is beautiful. And her son's married now. Yeah. He'll be king. Did you watch that wedding, Leslie? No. No? I don't have cable. Oh, here's another good picture. Brittany. Ooh, la di da This will have to Brittany. risk copyright violation by showing <laughs> Hot, hot Brittany. It'd be like, ah, she looks good like that, huh? Stay that way, Brittany. We miss you. The Mid-State Fair misses you. That's where she started, you know, in 99 at the Mid-State Fair with the pink top and white pants. Well, she you were was there? kicking butt. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got, we got, we got mugged after we got chased down by a bunch of Mexicans. <laughs> I did, I, we'll go into that later. <laughs> Bye, Brittany. Hi. <laughs> Here's the handbook I have at Quest College. Video production. I recommend taking, I'm going to be taking some classes there. I never finished the course. <laughs> he had me in there. She, the lady that was doing the class, her, her, she said that she knew the guy from MASH, or whatever. That he'd come to the, he was gonna, Tony, Tony Coppola was gonna come out or something. But he doesn't work there anymore. Anyway, that is a really good picture of Brittany. Pictures. I don't know who this chick is. This is like, Amer Greatest America's Phoniest Home Videos. Don't you think I should have called it that? America's <laughs> Phoniest Home Videos. You know, they should have another one for the people that, you know, that, the people that do that. You know what I mean? They do a phony one. You know, the people that, you know, people, that show, America's fun, Funniest Own Videos. You remember that show, Lizzie? People would watch that and they would send in videos that were faked and they could tell. So I thought, why not do another show alongside, you know, redoing America's Funniest Own Videos with, with obviously, you know, America's Phoniest Own Videos. Because that's still disrespectful to those people. It would be better than the show. That's not a very good show, but uh, that's like a rip off a candid camera, isn't it? <laughs> but we could do a candid camera like show, but we can't call it candid camera. We could call it, you know, a uh, uh, really candid camera. <laughs> 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 so like that. Uh, I'm gonna kind of. I love satire. Walk around the room. He's defying your authority. <laughs> well, that's the end of the show. We'll see you next week. Or uh, she's gonna put the email address. It's Gary underscore Hickson at Yahoo Yahoo dot com. G A R R Y underscore H-I-X-O-N at yahoo.com. I live in Warbeck, California. That's it.